Je vais vous parler de la position des I'm going to tell you about the position of the players of energy and agriculture in the face of biodiversity. Energy and agriculture are two key economic sectors for the future of biodiversity for two reasons. The first one is that farming produce and production of energy has huge impact on biodiversity. For agriculture, basically about 80% of the impacts on biodiversity come from that through the consumption of ecosystems and through consumption of water. The production of energy through greenhouse gases has a major impact on biodiversity through global warming. The second reason for which energy and agriculture are fundamental challenges is that they are activities that are key to the functioning of society. And when you make energy rarer or more expensive, or farming produce rarer or more expensive, it has systemic consequences on the economy and the way in which societies operate. Because, of course, if food and energy is more expensive, it poses a large number of uh, social and political challenges. So in the face of these two issues, how can one reason in terms of mitigating the impact of energy and agriculture on biodiversity? There are various ways of uh, taking the question into account. The first one is not necessarily the most sophisticated. Uh, the first approach is to reduce uh, the agricultural en energy uh, produce. Uh, this should allow a reduction of impacts on biodiversity. So it is easy to understand that this can have dramatic impacts on societies. You can't purely reason in terms of uh, reduced production. The second way of uh, envisaging things is could there not be a better spread, a better distribution of production? Currently, it is thought that about one billion humans uh, receive insufficient nutrition and about one to two billion humans consume too much. And when you start calculating in quantitative terms, what is over-consumed would be um, totally sufficient to feed those who are underfed. The third manner of approaching things, which has the preference of scientists and technologists, would be to reduce the environmental impact of each unit produced. If you take a terawatt or a kilowatt hour or a protein and see how you can reduce the environmental impact per unit of these activities. It's a relatively sophisticated. There can be a whole set of different methods. For instance, natural gas producers have noted that there are less emissions from that than the production of coal, or that vegetable protein has a lower environmental impact than animal protein, and notably from beef. But the problem is that in these sophisticated changes, uh, there can be domino effects or detrimental effects on the intensity of consumption, which is why uh, two other possibilities are our mode of consumption how we consume energy, how we consume agricultural produce. And there's the slow food movement where we can think about other ways to interact with food for energy. The same type of issues can also emerge. And then ultimately reducing one's consumption. If you want to reduce production without negative social impacts, you need to think about reducing consumption. So for these various issues, you can, of course, uh, try and look at agriculture. What we're witnessing in terms of these questions is the development of three types of approaches. The first one, which I would quali qualify as classical or traditional, is precision agriculture. Uh, this basically means extending and continuing the current trends of the past decades with uh, increasingly elaborate scientific and technological methods that 
could allow us to reduce environmental impact. So the use of robots, the use of GPS, GMOs, and uh, rewriting the genome in the hope that this can ultimately reduce environmental impact. Another major question is that these question is that these methods are usually very costly and increase a uh, result in a mechanical increase in uh, the costs supported by farmers. So its economic viability is not obvious unless you get rid of all the small farms and just want a few huge farms. Socially, this is uh, no easy question. Because what we also need to do is to create jobs, and the social reality of agriculture is that there are more than one billion farmers in the world, and the number of farmers is increasing. And brutally cutting the number of farmers would result in major social and political difficulties in Africa and Asia. Uh, African and Asian cities do not have the capacity uh, to handle a mass rural exodus. In India, for instance, Bruno Norin, who's a specialist, has noted that farms are less than one hectare. And if the economic viability of uh, an Indian farm is around 10 hectares, according to the precision agriculture specialists, it would mean that 300 million farmers in India would need to lose their job and they would need to live in cities. And But Indian cities cannot accept these 300 million farmers. So how do you manage uh, this huge uh, social problem? And then the third model, which is why peasant farming is growing, is to try to think about the viability of small peasant farmers with limited farms in Africa and Asia who still represent the bulk of agriculture because there's about a million farm a billion farmers with very small uh, farms and there are very few there are much far fewer uh, farmers in Europe and America and then the third model is that of agro environmental uh, environmentalism the much more leverage of the uh, ecological functions of the environment, but it is still very much theoretical. You need to work on the size of the parcels. The parcels need to be smaller, and need to be longer in order for biodiversity to play its role in maintaining uh, soil fertility and so on. And this model needs uh, much more development in, in, in interaction with technologies that can be used by farmers. So in conclusion, both in energy and in agriculture, the future lies in a hybridization between multiple models, drawing inspiration both from techniques uh, such as uh, are offered by precision agriculture. We also need to think in terms of the scale of uh, farms and which priorities to focus on, because currently there aren't many resources allocated to precision agriculture. Should there not be more investment in that or more investments in peasant farming or in agroecology? Currently, private agricultural research allocates about 45% of its resources to corn, to maize, and perhaps that is not consistent with the needs of society. Thank you.